Hello everyone, this is Anton and in this video I want to show Obsidian on the new Galaxy Fold 5. So let's start with the outer screen. Go ahead and log in. We'll go ahead and open up Obsidian. And what you notice off the bat with the Galaxy Fold 5 is the outer screen is thinner than an average phone. So working within Obsidian it's going to be a little cramped. And as you can see here, it is it is usable. You can see I have a table here and some other content in here. It, it is usable, but as long as you're not trying to go outside of the current width that is there, then you won't have much problems. But if you are going further out of this width, so like I have a table here, we can see that immediately, as soon as I click into this table, there are some columns that are pushed off to the side and it's really difficult to get over there uh, just using the swipe because if you swipe you're going to get the side panel that comes out for obsidian if you swipe one way and then the other way the same thing so if you do have your keyboard layout um, set up you can use the arrow arrow keys here like i have and that can get you to be able to go outside of the boundaries of what the screen layout is but that is one thing to note if you are going to use obsidian in this outer screen it is going to be cramped the the other thing here is that you do get the mobile view when you're in the outer screen so you get the different the hamburger menu down at the bottom and the other buttons for the tabs and adding uh, new or searching for different notes all this stuff looks just like a mobile device but as soon as you open up the device the layout goes to a similar desktop mode that you would you know see on a desktop so you can swipe right you can swipe left just like you can on the outer screen but that bottom row of buttons disappear everything is now on the side as it would be on the desktop and then you would access any of those buttons here on the side so that's one thing to note uh, once you open up the screen now it is enough real estate in here so if you do want to um, pin one of the side panes there you do get plenty of space to have that side pane maybe you have the file explorer on one side and then the notes on the other you can get to the tabs from the top up there so that still works and yeah it's pretty roomy once you open this device up now one thing that is sometimes could be problematic is when you pin one of these panes to the side you close it you come back and you open it up let's see if it'll do it here we can see here that that pinned pane is still there on this cramped screen and that doesn't look user friendly at all. So if you do come in here and you kind of back out and reopen this side pane, let me see if we can get into home there and then go back or just reset. If you reset this kind of view, like I have the, the home page set up so that if I scroll down, it will delete um, any of the notes that I have open and then eventually once all of them are have been closed it will come to this home page so you can see it it removed that side pane now you cannot pin the side pane or it does not give you that pin button like it would if you open up the screen so it it does help you if you're in this particular um, view or panel where it's in mobile mode then you're not allowed to do the pen but because you open it up and it seems as if it's in a larger screen or it is in a larger screen you do get the option so if you pin it when you go back to that outer screen you could be um, challenged with having that cramped view of the pen side panes now outside of that there I haven't really noticed too much issue with this here. Now I'm in dark mode now and on the camera you can 
obviously see that there is a gap in between there. It doesn't really get into the way. And if you're in the light mode, let's switch over to light mode, it pretty much disappears. Um, you can still see it if you're looking for it, but it pretty much disappears on you through normal day use. So I haven't found it to be a distraction at all. Now, if I go back into dark mode and also leave a comment on whether dark mode is better when I'm doing uh, these videos of the device like this or not. I, from my perspective, I, I see a lot of reflection. So you might see these reflections as well. And I think the light mode is better, but I've heard back and forth on light mode versus dark mode with it when I'm doing these different videos. So one of the benefits of having this device is the pen that that you can get with it. So here I do have the slim pen that Samsung allows you to use on this particular fold device. And if I want to do any type of pen use, I can open up a Scala draw on here and I'm go ahead and put it down. And we will zoom in a little bit there. And I can use a Scala draw here with, with the pen. Now here it's not in pen mode, but if I go ahead and I select that pen, so I can use the pen mode, you can come in here and you can, you can write. And it works very well, it's speedy. There's no issues with the pen input within Excala Draw. So you can have all your handwritten notes within Obsidian if you want to do it this way. A couple of things that you might want to do when you are in here is I like to set the, the pen size to the smallest one and then also make the fill a solid fill there. So it's not as big. See how that looks. And then also on the side here, we can see within this menu that you have this little pen with a little trail. If you have that on, it's good because what it does not allow is your finger to actually draw on the screen. So if you are putting your, your um, palm on the screen or if you're trying to swipe around and move the actual canvas, you're not drawing on there. So by enabling this here, and it enables by default when I select that pen mode. So you should not have to enable it when you do it or think about it. It should happen automatically. But once that's there, you can see my finger doesn't draw on there. And then I can use my two fingers to move around. Now you also have the ability to go into what what is called Zen mode. So if I come out and I long press on the on the screen, you have what's called Zen mode. And when we go ahead and enable that, you can see how the the menus kind of clean themselves up a little bit. Um, you still have the one at the top. You still see this Zen mode where you exit at the bottom and you still have the percent of zoom down at the bottom. So this here gives you a little bit more space to work with. I do actually like going, coming into this mode versus having all these menus everywhere on the screen. But uh, just to let you know that option is there. So we can exit the uh, zoom mode. And a couple other things that I enable in the settings. Let me come out of here. Come in the pin mode. Oh, also what you saw right there is if you try to swipe, I was trying to get the side pane open there. You cannot swipe in the canvas and get that going when you have this enabled. What you can do is either go to the top and do your slide from one side to the other or slide over this particular menu that's right there and it will allow you to do it there as well. So I can come here, go into settings. Let me go into Excala Draw, and there are a couple settings that I do to help with the experience uh, within here. And one is going to be the the save, the auto save. So 
There's an interval for autosave on desktop, and it's good that they separate it from desktop to uh, mobile. Is that on the mobile one, I set it to five minutes. What happens is when the autosave initiates, if you're doing a pin input while it initiates, then it does not actually draw on the screen. It does pause for a bit. So if you're in, you know, mid stroke, you will see a, a gap in between the, you know, you writing on there and, and by the time it finishes, then it'll pick back up. So the longer you set that, the less likely it will happen. It does get annoying if it's set for, uh, what's the minimum here? 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute and five minutes. So 10 seconds and 30 seconds are I think way too small for these, um, but the um, the rare or one minute or five minutes should be doable. The other thing you also have here is you have uh, OCR capabilities. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom here, you have enable task bone for OCR. And what you can do here is if you are doing, going to do your handwriting here, um, it, you don't automatically get OCR, which I think would be a nice feature to have an, an interval base OCR to where every so often it will scan your, your actual note that you configure and then add that as text into the note. That would be nice, but right now you have to manually do it. So it is enabled here. I've enabled it on my device. And what you can do with that is you can come in here to the menu. You see, I hit that obsidian uh, symbol. And then there's an A in that menu. You tap that and it will do OCR, OCR on your, your handwritten note. And it will only do the handwritten stuff that you do and also images with some kind of uh, handwriting or text in it. One thing to note with the OCR is that do read the the actual comments and the information about it. It does send information out to another service to do do the OCR. So use it at your own risk. Now, one thing with the OCR on the mobile device is that this will not do it. It will not work on the mobile device. So if I come into this menu and I try to, to do the OCR. So if I come into the menu here and if I was to go ahead and click on this, this little A symbol for doing the OCR, nothing would happen when I'm on mobile. Um, for whatever it's not supported, I guess, on mobile, it doesn't really say it's not, but I've tried it here and it does not work. Now you can simply just go to your desktop after you've done your handwriting here and then hit the button and that does work. Uh, but it is a little inconvenient, uh, inconvenient that you have to go to your desktop in order to get the OCR feature to work. So hopefully that will be something that gets fixed. Um, sometime down the road. So outside of that, um, for the most part, I think the Obsidian on this device works pretty well. Um, you do have Dex mode that you get with this device, but I'm not going to go into that. I don't use it much. It works really well. It's fast and everything, but it's easier, in my opinion, just to go to my laptop instead of trying to connect a monitor to my phone with keyboard when I have a laptop that already has a, you know, a display and keyboard already integrated into it. And one other piece of feedback is that if you are going to use this for handwriting, the, if you have this case on here, or if, even if you don't, you will find that there's a little imbalance in the device because you have the camera module only on the one side there. So you will get a little bit of wob wobble if you're putting this on a flat surface. So if you turn it to the side, I've noticed that the wobble's a little bit um, muted if you're going from left to right in this particular mode. So you will have to just change the uh, rotation on your on the app. But it does feel it's less wobble if you're 
writing on it this way than if you do it this way because once you start coming from one side to the other it does this little seesaw type of action here it does not you may get a little bit of up and down type of uh, movement but because you're pressing on here it's typically not as bad as doing it this way so just one more thing to note um, other than that obsidian on this on this device it works pretty well i definitely would not recommend uh, paying for a fold 5 just to use obsidian but if you have this device obsidian uh, works very well on it so you do get more screen real estate to work with and you get a benefit of being able to do pen input where if you're on a desktop it's not as likely that you're going to be doing some kind of drawing with a mouse so that is it for this video if you like the information go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and until the next time have a nice day